Welcome into another episode of Jim and Ten Sports. I am Scotty here with Ekman and Lucky as usual. We did take uh, last week off because apparently Lucky thought having a kid was more important than doing this podcast. <laughs> I thought it was pretty rude, but you know, I guess I'll still yeah. congratulate you. So I could have totally done it from the hospital. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could have. You know, you could have had your wife in the background. It could have been. It could have been a gr- uh, great thing, but. Yeah, you know. So, how's well, your guys' uh, last two weeks been going? Besides the kid, obviously, big news right there. But how's everything else been with you guys? How about you, pretty Josh? Good. Yeah, uh, good. pretty good. Just kind of putzing along, yard sale shopping right now, garage sales, community yard sales, whatever. Kind of doing all that, and yep. Any good finds? Um, like a couple things here and there. Today, I just got. I picked up this with a bunch of Star Wars action figures. Oh, I got that's for like cool. five bucks on. I got for like yeah, around five bucks. It goes for like thirty on eBay. So got little things like that. A lot of Pokemon figures, stuff like that. But yeah, here and I've, there, I'm learning still. I've been watching uh, videos on TikTok and stuff. Man, you can actually find some pretty good deals on like sports stuff uh, at yard sales. Some people are just yeah. willing just to give that stuff away. I don't know if it's whether like they need to get out of the hobby or like it's just you know a wife matter or husband or what it is, but. A lot yeah, of times, I think it's stuff. more. I think a lot of times it's more people just don't know what they have. Um, people want to get like kids, like maybe had it when they were younger, and then um, uh, the parents are finally getting rid of it and stuff like that. But um, I mean, it's 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 a whole different world. The the whole yard sale thing. Um, you definitely it's something that it takes a lot of time to kind of learn everything because like I mean, obviously, I was sports cards and Pokemon cards really for the majority of this year so far. And now I'm trying to get more into like the action figures, Star Wars figures, just different things like that. Even like VCR, like it's kind of weird, like VCR and DVD players. Like there's actually a market for those, and I would have thought like that's crazy, but there's actually a market for like VCR players. Like people collect like old stuff like that. Um, That is weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's really weird. And like I I was down yard selling down in Myrtle, um, and. Me and the guy that works with me down there, we were out and we were picking up this huge collection of Wizard of, Wizard of Oz like stuff, like dolls, picture frames, whatever. In my head, I was sitting there thinking, like, what are you, what are we doing? Like, it's sixty bucks. Like, why are we wasting our money on Wizard of Oz, whatever? I mean, we went back to the store that day and sold. We got our money back within the first like probably ten minutes off of like two items. We still had like another hundred dollars worth of profit left to go. So it's like it's weird what sells and you just don't yeah until you get in it and whatever you, you kind of get amazed as you're going through it so yeah there's a market for everything if you really think yeah. about it it's just it's just if there happens to be you know a big enough consumer rate for you to you know have that stuff but it sounds like you're yeah. kind of like dipping your toes into a little bit of everything then just pretty much oh, if it's it a collectible is. If it's yep. a collectible, it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be at your spot, right? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, pretty much. That's honestly what it is. That's why I have changed my uh, name uh, from Ekman's Sports Collectibles to Ekman's Cards and Collectibles because, as much as I am into the sports cards and Pokemon cards, the collectibles area is just so big. Um, so I'm yeah, I'm doing that. Like right now, I'm actually looking at a storage unit. Uh, uh, hopefully by tomorrow at eleven, I'll know if I got it or not. But it's a basically. There's odds and end things there that I can piece out, but the main part of it is old Nintendo game system, old PlayStation 1 system, like stuff like that. Old games, like Nintendo games are a huge, huge thing, like Nintendo 64, like different things like that. There's just such a huge market for those. And it's not even people that play them, it's just people that like to collect the game itself and just hold on to the game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just kind of slowly getting into every area that I can in the collectibles industry, so... What what That's are those awesome. behind you? Are those Pokemon boxes? The red and white. Oh, uh, so these here, these are Pokemon celebration boxes. So you'll see these all the time. Like I get those at Walmart for like twenty bucks. Like on eBay, they're selling for like forty, fifty dollars. Wow. Um, but you, like they're going out, they're going out of like the, that style or whatever is going out, so it's harder to get them. But yeah, as soon as I if I go to Walmart, I see them. Like I get them like constantly. So. Um, I mean, I got those like Funko Pops. Obviously, you guys know about Funkos. Yep. Those yeah. do huge in the collectibles. Um, By the way, that area. one you just showed is from a really big independent comic called Saga. That's a pretty big... Um, there's oh, a lot okay. of people who love that they'll, comic book series. like this thing here. I got this from my uncle. A 1978... Yeah, that's 1978 like Ronald McDonald. Nightmares are made of. No, that's... Yeah. that's... <laughs> 
Get Scotty's twin hey, off the screen, hey, will you? You, <laughs> hey, you? You guys, you guys saw the uh, Chucky doll I got, didn't you? Oh yeah, you yeah. But I, I didn't know. I don't know if that. I did. I don't know. I, if I'll I have did. to send you a picture next time I get a chance. But um, we were yard selling a month last month, and the guy that works with me, he's very, very good at picking like, stuff out. We were like a block away from this house, and he's like, "I think that's a good guy's Chucky doll." I said, what are you talking about? Like, we're at, we get down there and sure enough, it was a good guy's Chucky doll. It's like a three foot, like tall Chucky doll in its original box. We got it for like, I think 50 bucks and it's, it goes for like 200, 250 or something like that on eBay. So that's crazy. Yeah. It's a pretty cool collector's piece. That's for sure. No, for sure. So uh, real quick, I want to say congratulations to Scotty too, for that um, podcast last week. You started uh, two yeah. guys in a mic unplugged. Yeah. Um, yeah, two guys in the mic unplug because we be saying some naughty words. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I made it uh, five seconds into the podcast before a naughty word was said. So. Oh, yeah. I made Actually, sure that F-bomb was dropped immediately. So I put it on Spotify, too, on our Jim Mint uh -huh. 10 page, and I yeah. had to put explicit content on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, absolutely. It's Yeah, it. but that's okay. You know what? It just... It's just the way I talk sometimes. So it, from I years of construction, it. it's yeah. It, from years of construction, I kind of got like a that sailor mouth, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, so just, yeah, no. yeah, I I try not to. I try not to all the time. Like on here, I can control myself. I can control it. But sometimes when I'm with my buddies and we're just talking and BSing, I'll just I'll just let them rip. So you got to, yeah. It, it's gonna happen, yeah. But I got to talk to my brother. He was a little little shy guy. Well, just let her rip. Dude. Let her rip. <laughs> no, I don't so we have a group in naughty words. <laughs> we have a group chat with a bunch of our friends, and they were calling him the creeper because he was just like all up high, like staring at his mic. And me and Matt were talking the whole time, and they were like, "Dude, Mike was uh, yeah." Who, there. Who's the third? Who's the third creeping. one? Creeping. So, uh, you talking about the guy with the glasses? Well, I know your brother, obviously, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The oh no, they both have glasses. Yeah. So the guy that looks like me is obviously my brother, and then the other one that's that's Matt. Uh, we just let just him on. A, just he, a friend of yours, of guys, is, or he, yeah, he's our special handicap friend, so we let him oh, okay, get on the go. podcast. So <laughs> you gotta he have can one feel of special, those. yeah, so he can feel <laughs> special. And but then we have another buddy that's mad because I guess he's been wanting to do a sports podcast for a long time. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so he texts us and he was like, "What the hell?" He's like, "I've been uh... wanting to do a podcast forever." So, but. The problem is that he's only a football guy. Like he doesn't follow baseball. He doesn't oh, follow yeah. basketball. And we're like, how are we? How are you going to be on a sports podcast and you just only follow yeah, one you gotta, sport? Yeah, follow every sport really. Yeah. So come football season, I I told him I said, come football season, you can just hang out with us all through like the football season. And when football's out, I'll go ahead and yeah. um, I'll fire you, and you can collect unemployment, and then you can come back <laughs> yeah, yeah. next football season. Lay them off for the yeah for the year, yeah for the rest of the yeah. year. Yeah, Actually, fun, your time. fun <laughs> trivia before you came along, Josh, his friend Matt, who's on there with him, he was on this podcast, the Jim and oh, really? podcast. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like an episode. We, oh, yeah, we okay, did yeah. a, yeah, we did a fantasy football episode. He's real, real big on fantasy football. So he, yeah. he came in and I, that was like, I think that might be our longest besides having uh, cards on here. I want to say that was our, our longest podcast. Because yeah. I think that one was like an hour and 15. But I think the other one was like an hour, 20, 25. Yeah, yeah but we, we had a lot to talk about. We we were trying to cut it short. And I think we ended up, I think that episode was like an hour and 15 minutes or something like yeah. that. So we're going to try to this week, you know, since there's no uh, NFL draft to talk about or anything like that, we're just going to focus on basketball and baseball. So uh, I think we'll probably be able to cut it down to like 45, 50 minutes, try not to bore the people too much. Yeah. There you go. Uh, we were going to start the pro wrestling podcast this week, but the third guy is selling his house. So they had to do an open house and he wasn't allowed in his house for like 10 hours. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, I'd, we'll do it. Next. So I'm thinking me and the one guy might start it and then we'll bring the third guy when he settled in to his place. But yeah, we'll do that. And then uh, because, John, what was that? Uh, you guys going to do that one weekly? That's a weekly thing, right? Yeah, I mean, we'll cover Raw and Smack. If you, I don't know if you will follow wrestling, but there's Raw, there's NXT, there's SmackDown. Then you have your pay-per-views, which they call premium live events now. They're not pay-per-views anymore, but whatever. So you can cover yeah. all this stuff every week. So that might be a weekly thing. This one, uh, for everyone watching, it might be an every couple week thing, just because if we're limiting this to only sports cards, there's not much going on in the sports card world right now. So unless you just like hearing the three of us, you know, 
bullshit around, but yeah, 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 which I think that people people are probably used to by now. Oh yeah. So, but yeah, no, it's good stuff coming, and um, yeah. So, uh, and next week I wanted to tell you guys we have that um PJ from Boston Card Shop going to be on here. That's probably the last one we'll do before we take an every week break, but. He runs a Facebook page, Breakers Unite. So um, he's trying to help the community. Like, you know, TikTok is banning people. Whatnot has their fees. He's trying to provide a, a platform with two of his buddies where Breakers can go and not have to worry about that stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I dig yeah. it. So, and yeah, he'll be on and, here. And the big news with Fanatics, they're announcing that they're going to start their uh, streaming platform to go kind of toe to toe with whatnot. So, we're, we're going to see. Um, I've been hearing a lot of people kind of not be upset with whatnot, but they don't like how they handle some of the situations as far as when people like don't receive their cards, especially high end market cards. And then they just kind of send the person like a couple boxes and say, yeah, well, this is same value, but really it's not because what if that's like your team, you know, the guy, a guy at UPC, whatever it is, what if it's like a once in a lifetime hit? Um, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys saw the thing where the, the guy hit a, the 101 Waddle RPA, never got sent to the guy. And in nine months later, oh, yeah. it, it was oh, yeah. it was on the same the same stream that you know ripped it for him was selling it in a PSA slab. It's like Yeah, I saw I don't that know how video. much more of a slap in the face you can get, but I, I mean, thought that was at the end of the day, the these breakers are gonna ruin the whole thing for everybody. Yep. I mean, there's yeah, going to come a point in time where they're going to police it so bad that people aren't going to be able to break. I mean, they'll obviously they'll be able to do it on TikTok and Facebook and wherever they want to do it by themselves. But there's going to become a point in time where people just aren't going to want to buy into breaks anymore. And that whole, that, and I think it might even be happening now. Maybe, maybe not. But it's going to slow down. I mean, eventually, if, if all this keeps happening and and these breakers keep doing things like that, like it's going to slow down and people are going to stop getting into breaks and that whole market is going to just not be there anymore. It's well, hard to say. So many just, breakers. Yeah. There's so many well, breakers. Too, and yeah. Online shopping is such a big thing right now. Yeah. That everyone wants to buy online. It's more convenient. So, you know, I don't want to go drive to the card shop. I'd rather just, you know, pay someone online to ship me a card. It's, but like you said, the people that are doing the sketchy stuff is going to ruin yeah. the trust value of it. But. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because there are a lot of good breakers out there, but it's the amount that they're charging for some of this product too. Because it's like well, that's, I don't yeah. know, I don't know if they're going to their hobby shop and just getting like normal pricing and then jacking it up. Even after yeah. that, that's not how you can do it. The only way you can do it is you got to be able to get the stuff at retail. You know, right? Yeah, so that's just, that's another tough thing too. Is people are trying to, and the other thing too, I think is the the world of twenty twenty football. Where was Burrow, Herbert, all those guys, and that's kind of, I mean, that year is what kind of just took this all and took it skyrocketed, and now it was football really that did all that. Um, the blaster boxes aren't worth nothing anymore. Right. Uh, mega boxes aren't worth nothing anymore. Like you're not getting nothing really unless you're opening up a hobby box, and I, sometimes I that's even a little iffy too. But but the like the world of people going to like now when I go to Walmart, there's so many blaster boxes there. Of just now, obviously, there's not selected mosaic and stuff like that, but everything else, there's just so much there now. It's like they can't get rid of it. Um, so nobody really wants blaster boxes anymore. Nobody wants uh, even mega boxes that, that aren't that great anymore. Um, so that's the other thing too is yeah, that world of like getting a blaster box or mega boxes and doing this huge break like of all that stuff. I just don't think it's there anymore, especially because the the draft classes haven't been as good as the 2020 years and stuff like that but yeah so i think that's gonna slow down a little bit also and everything's been about hype like people yeah. only want to rip like the brand new product you know that that comes out so yeah um it, it's just yeah so like sure for a minute that product might be sold out whether it be blasters makers hobbies and then the new the new product will come out and then that one will be yep. old news and no one's buying that um like when i went to the hobby shop uh yesterday we actually went twice yesterday and the first time we went in there he had a bunch of bowman uh hobbies the one with the uh the new the new the new one when yeah. he had both the one auto and the three autos we went back in there like four hours later and he was sold out because that's like the <coughs> new 
new product that's out right now. So, yep. yeah, it's, I don't know. I, I did buy a, um, I ripped my first, it was 2022 Tops. Um, shoot, why can I not think of it? Um, Stadium Chrome. Those mm. cards oh, are yeah. freaking nice. I've always liked Stadium oh, Club. Wow. Yeah. But the but it's the chrome. Because you have the one the non-chrome and then you have the chrome. The chrome is is such a nice product. It was whew. and then I was even looking because it's such a nice product. I was actually going in and looking, and people will buy some of those base cards for like two or three dollars. Yeah. So I actually grabbed a bunch of like the better base cards and I, I threw them in my thing to to sell to see if anyone ends up you know, wanting a couple of because they're really nice. Even the base cards look non-base. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, but, it's funny because I sent my buddy a picture. Because remember how we all? I'm sure you guys did it too. We all hit the Walmart restocks and they were stocking the new product and yeah, all the shelves were empty. Yeah. So now you go to the sports cards; it's completely filled. It's crazy. I have a, I have a newborn now. I found the new restock is trying to find Infamil. The shelves yeah. are empty. Oh, and yeah, that's crazy result. how that yeah. works. I'm, I'm yeah, sending pictures to my buddy. I'm like, man, I'm hoping the restock hits one of these days when I'm here. And yeah, that's, to... that was a, there was yeah. a shortage of that of um, formula. What was that, last year? Yeah. Yeah. Because my sister, when she had her first child, um, uh, she was she had the same problem. There, were, Yeah, there, were, there was a shortage of formula. You couldn't get it anywhere. Yeah, I'm gonna start trading stuff for formula now. So anyone, I'll be, I'll be the guy. I'll be the guy in there buying all the formula. I'll have a yard sale the next week and double my prices. I want to be doing oh, case man. breaks on Infamil and uh, Lucky's Elite breaks. I'll be doing um, case you breaks you, on Infamil. You think, you think all your guys' kids cost that much? Wait till you come buy stuff at my yard sale. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm all done with all that. I don't got to worry about that stuff no more. Yeah, that's true. Yep. You got grandkids coming though. I already got two of them. They're already there, but they're they're past that stage. Oh, one's one's five, one's two, so they're already past the infamil stages. But who knows? We'll see if more end up happening. So might have that yeah. stage again. But yeah, that was one of the. They were even complaining when that the all the infamil was gone off the shelves and stuff. But I do. I would say. I will say this: if 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 people are going in there and really buying like infamil. And then turn around trying to sell it online for more money and taking advantage yeah. of. That I don't know stuff. if they do that, man. That's, that's they actually up. do that or yeah. not. That's but... that's yeah. That you you shouldn't be doing that. You know that's it's supply and demand. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Josh I get is it. like the he does not get yeah. damn dude. Josh, Josh is like, hey, if so I don't make my good. five bucks, I'll make. Yeah, <laughs> trust me. If you if you had kids and you, your your baby's hungry, but, at but home, someday you guys will come down to Myrtle Beach and you'll come into my uh, flea market site and you'll see a whole row just in uh, formula. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's gonna it's gonna be in a glass case in the back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah locked up. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna get one slabbed up. Yeah, he, he'll he's, get one he's gonna need one of those things where he sticks his thumb on it. <laughs> oh <up>. my! <laughs> yeah, but yeah, going back to the breaking thing. So you guys saw what happened with um uh, a friend of our podcast, D's Cards. He's been on here before, and um he was doing a card break. He opened a Contenders Optic, which is a Panini product, and then he pulled a CJ Stroud Bowman University. It's a gold shimmer, which it didn't have a number on it like it should have. Uh, usually, those are like numbered to ten or ninety nine or whatever. Uh, but it's interesting that a tops card was in a panini product and i talked to him on the phone i called him or not i texted him and he said um that he he knows the haters are saying that you know he planted that but he's like you can watch my stream i open it all fresh i can't explain it like i swear to you that happened so okay I so i can i can explain that panini and and tops their cards are um distributed at the same spot they're they're made and put into boxes so it can happen to where a panini product can happen end up in a tops product and a tops product can happen in a panini because they get packaged at the same facility mm, yeah. They, yeah they actually they actually share share a spot so See, i was, I was makes, thinking it i was thinking sense. it was either that or um repacking like i don't know where he got his products at but i know in the pokemon world like we deal a lot with uh repacks basically people buying product really lose uh carefully taking the product apart taking all the big hits out putting like a small hit in resealing the product back up gluing it and everything and then selling it and like they're going to get all the good stuff out and resell the the bad stuff that's so right. messed up 
No, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, but I've had it. I've had it where I've bought cards or I've bought like a thing and I got a couple packs, and I might not catch it right away, but like someone else might catch it and we'll look at it. And you know, sure enough, you can see where the glue's a little bit off center and stuff like that. It just doesn't look right once you really, really look at it. But um, and sometimes it's very hard to catch. Like nowadays, people are good at that stuff, uh, so it's very hard to catch uh, all the time. So yeah, it's like counterfeit money. If it yeah. looks, smells exactly the same as anything else, yep. you're not going to question. And think about it, when you're grabbing like a, a brand new pack, you're not like examining the pack to make sure it's been, yep. you know, that hasn't been tampered with. Yep. That, know, that's why that. they have that. That's why there's there were such um, issues with like the uh, the uh, Jordan rookies and stuff like back in the 86 Fleer and stuff like those packs were so easy to open up and whatever and then resell them back together. So, wax yep. packs. Yeah, yeah, the wax packs. Yeah, it's crazy. So. Well, yeah. Think yeah. about they do the uh, they do the real the resale wax packs. Have you guys seen those? Now you can buy um, like someone will just get a bunch of uh, wax together. Yeah, throw it into a, a the those uh, the packs, and then they sell yep. them as a resale. Well, I mean, they tell you that they're resells. Yeah, they tell you. They kind of, yeah. yeah, they just make the pack up themselves. But well, if you look yeah, at that's how easy it is. Yeah, yep. if you look at their packaging, it looks exactly like the nineteen eighties yep. packaging. And that's what so, um. That's what we do. Like that, we have we'll have people that, and not just us, but like anybody, will have people that they will sell to them, and then they'll buy, and then they'll realize it's a resold package, and they didn't tell them obviously. So, so that's when you know that they're doing it on purpose, and they're uh, taking out the big hit. Because in like Pokemon, it's the same thing with like sports cards. You're gonna get like a decent hit, or you're gonna get something out of that out of that pack. Um, no, it's not always gonna be a good hit, but that's what they do. They go through the packs take out all the big hits, wherever they are, put maybe a small hit in there to make sure it, it doesn't come off as a resold pack, resell it back up and go out and sell it for the same price that they bought it for. And they just made their money plus whatever they got out of the packs. Yeah, wow. some people, they, they, they go too far with this stuff. It's just, yeah, they, they're so addicted to it, you know, because it, it's, no, yeah. it's definitely a form of gambling and some people can't stand to lose. Yep. So, hey, aren't you going to do, speaking about gambling, uh, Ekman, aren't you going to do a little podcast on uh, sports betting? I would like to because um, I know with everybody branching out and kind of doing different things, um, it's going to like we kind of free up a little bit of our time, especially if we're going to do this maybe every other week or something like that. So I would like to get into something, um, either a gambling podcast. I'd also have been thinking about maybe something Pokemon-wise, but like, I don't have anybody because I know how Pokemon's so big right now. Like, but I don't have anybody that I know yet that I could think of that would be able to help me with that. Because, like, I, I'm I'm little well versed in the Pokemon world, but nowhere near where some of these people are. So, so I I, I would like to maybe think about that down the road someday. That could be later, but yeah, no, I definitely would like to maybe try to get a betting uh, podcast going, um, especially you know you maybe before football season starts. You could blog your your Ekman collectibles. Yeah, you could blog that, and then and then you could just make like a little series. It, it'd probably actually probably boost up your uh, uh, your your I don't know your name a little bit in that area. Yeah, you know, and I never just, thought about that. Yeah, that's something I would yeah definitely like, like to. Look. Yeah, just like blog a whole weekend because I'm assuming the weekends are your busiest time, right? Yeah, they tend to be. It depends yeah. really just on the tourists and when they're there and what the weeks like and stuff. But yeah, you yeah. could you could show videos of like when you go and uh, you know you pick up these big lots and like what you're looking for and um, you know how you can tell if something's valuable, like you know yeah. stuff like that, and then turn around and show how you prep it for you know your yep. area. Yeah, I would love the it. even mm -hmm. like TikTok. Like I I gotta be more active on there, but like even like, to, like I would love the do like a day in the life of like someone going to yard selling and like like finding stuff and looking it up and seeing what it sells for what you made and stuff like that um it's it's weird how much how much time that takes like it's it's literally another job on its own it is. uh get, getting into you know i mean just this alone here if you're doing it active and obviously now that you're doing another another podcast with uh those two guys and uh, Lucky's gonna be doing the wrestling one. Like it, it just it adds up a lot more and more. And I mean, Lucky will realize too because he has another. He has a kid there. He has to <laughs> pay yeah. attention to. But luckily, so, I have a wife that uh, she knows the true. grind, so yep. she she has no problem supporting. So I'm lucky there. But yeah, but it's it's cool though that we're. I, I think it's cool that 
this is getting to a point where we are branching out and not like we have our sports cards podcast, but now we're branching out to where we needed a all sports type podcast where it's yeah. not about just sports cards, where you guys are going to talk more about just sports, daily sports and stuff like that. Um, and then wrestling, just like specific topics like that are so important, I think. Um, and I think it'll be interesting down the road if we can ever get to a point where we can bring people in and they have them do their own podcast just on different yeah. areas of like just stuff they like to do. Like, I mean, and, and there's everybody can have different ideas, but like collectibles podcasts, Pokemon, just anything really. I mean, you think about it, so it, it's gonna be interesting to see where this all goes. Yeah, I think Scotty, remember that I mentioned that to you before we even started this. I told you that my end goal is to branch. I had this umbrella, and Scotty's just so go with it. He's he's just he goes with everything. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna create this whole big, you know, juggernaut. Yeah, okay, I'm in. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, didn't really talk as you know, turn this. Sounds, like but... sounds like a good team to me. What's yeah, that? So. What's that mean? Where he goes, you son of a bitch, I'm in. Uh huh. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> That's. Pretty I don't know. Problems. Um, I don't know what you guys have. Uh, where else you guys have that you want to talk about at all, if anything? But um, has anybody watched the new Netflix series, King of Collectibles? No, and I've been wanting to watch no, it. I, I, just, watch it. I, just I, I watched the not. first like twenty minutes of it. I haven't got a chance to like actually sit down and watch it. Um, it looks pretty interesting. What's it called? I, King of Collectibles. King, I'm gonna watch it tonight. Um, it, it, just for the first 20 minutes, and it might maybe it's just I don't know how it will branch out as the episodes go, but um, I don't even know how many episodes there are. But the the first thing I got from it was, look how much sport, look, look how much collectibles can be. You know what I mean? It it was more to me. It was more like, oh, let's watch something that I can never afford in my whole life. Yeah. And so it's interesting if you want to, if you're just very like, like interested in seeing like what things can cost and like how much they can cost. It's really fun to, for that. But like outside of that, it's just basically like, uh, Hey, look how rich we are. And like, what, what look what we can spend <laughs> our money on. Kind of like Pawn yeah. stars a little bit. Cause I'll Pretty be watching much. that. It's like, you know, I watch him buy like the declaration of independence, like an original copy. Yeah. And the guy wanted like 2 million for it. And then the, yeah. the guy that came into appraise, it's like, yeah, it's like 2 million. Yeah. And they're, he's like, well, I think one five is fair. And I'm like, one million five hundred. Like, oh, I'm I surprised the pawn, if... the pawn star guys. I'm surprised you didn't say like ten bucks. Oh yeah, yeah. no. But you guys, you guys got to gotta remember, man. But... He he's got to turn around and and sell it himself. So if he's gonna oh, auction I'm it off, you. it's kind of like these guys that buy the cards. <laughs> they turn around, like they buy them during the hype, and then they sell them later on, and they yep. sell for like 40 percent cheaper. You gotta remember if he if he turns around and he puts one point five into it and he takes it to an auction and it sells for like just like it's just a one point four. I mean yep. he's even though he has oh, it's, it's, it's it's crazy. I mean it's just in the flea market world where I have people come in constantly, uh whether it's on marketplace or wherever I'm at, but even if they come to the store, they'll bring in their collection and they'll say, Yeah, I I've looked on eBay and comps, I can get like around whatever a thousand dollars for this. And so on my side, well, for me to get it off of you, to sit on it, because depending on how fast I'm going to be able to sell it, to sit on it. So now all that money I just invested in it is sitting out somewhere where I could have made money elsewhere. I, I you got it. Like people don't understand. Like whenever I come back with like a say a number that is way less than what they thought. Well, listen, you're coming to a store that's going to resell your item. Now, if you yep. want your top dollar for it, go to somewhere where they are, they're going to collect your item where they want yep. your item like you can't like a lot of these people that come in that want to sell us stuff or sell anybody stuff like if you're going to something that you know that's going to resell that like you you have to go in there with the mindset i'm willing to let this go at a, a lower than way lower than what it's worth yeah you better expect to only be collecting about 70 percent of what it comps for that's yeah, that's yeah. yeah and, that, and that's really even pushing it too it depends on what yeah. it is but that's really even pushing it too because like for in my side of it I have to not only do I have to invest the money, sit on the money, pay my pay the guy that works with me, pay the rent, pay the other bills. You know what I mean? So I have to factor all this into, especially when I buy big lots. If I'm buying lots that are five hundred or a thousand or more, I gotta factor a lot of that stuff in. And they they and I understand like oh it's three thousand, but and I want two thousand for it. you. Have a thousand dollars profit to be made. I get that. That sounds great and all but like if i sell the first 500 of it right away and i have to sit on the remaining 
whatever two thousand or so of it. Well, that's not helping me. I'm only getting five hundred dollars. And the market changes so much that yeah. it, it might be worth – you might go in and buy it, whatever your – football cards, basic cards, whatever, that, yep. that type of stuff. You you can go in and buy it in August. Maybe you can't sell stuff till December, but then by then maybe like a player got hurt, um, yep. got into trouble you know, with the law, um, you know, th- just certain things like that to where you know their, their cards aren't – they're dropping in price. So and, it's, Yeah, and that's why – that's why on my end, Pokemon has been such a big focus because they don't lose they don't lose value or they shouldn't lose value. Um, the only way they lose value is if the market's slipping and the economy is get, getting worse. Um, but like Pokemon doesn't lose value; it's more sports cards, like you said. Yeah, one day it could be a great card, and the next day it could be nothing. Um, yep. Or one day it could be n- nothing card, and you passed it up on a sale, and the next day you realize, oh crap, I should have got that because I could have sold it for that much more. So. Yeah, yeah, I got you. All right, guys, that was a good episode. I know that um, we're going to wrap it up because Scotty's pulling double duty. He's going to do his other podcasts now, so and that'll be me starting next week. I'll be doing double duty too. So yeah, yep. But you're 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 see how I feel. Yeah. (laughs) All right, then. Well, it's good talking to you boys. Uh, We'll definitely be back next. It'll be Saturday for the special guest because Sunday's Mother's Day. Okay, that so, works for me because I'll be traveling probably all day Saturday, Sunday. So. Yeah. So, all right. That works. Good to go. Good talking to you boys, and we'll be back next week. Yep. Okay. Good. All right. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye.